Welcome back to Hungry for History. I'm Dr. Luli Clark. Today I will teach you about the history of the Mid Autumn Festival in China and the 270 year old moon cake recipe. Let's get it started! <music> The Mad Autumn Festival, also called Mooncake Festival, falls on the 15th day of the 8th month of the Chinese lunar calendar. This is usually around late September or early October on the Western Georgian calendar. In 2020, the Mad Autumn Festival is on October 1st. Nowadays, it is considered a time when the family gets together to have a meal, light lanterns, and admire what's believed to be the brightest and biggest full moon of the year. Outside of China, some Southeast Asian countries such as Vietnam, Malaysia, Singapore, and the Philippines also celebrate the Moon Festival, although some refer it as the Lantern Festival instead. The origin of the Mid-Autumn Festival is debatable. There isn't one single answer to the question of when and how the festival began. Some argue that the beginnings of the Mid-Autumn Festival can be traced back to almost 3,000 years ago, to the Zhou Dynasty. In the Mid-Autumn, emperors would give offerings to the moon to celebrate the year's harvest and to pray for a good harvest in the coming year. It was a religious ritual among the royals and later scholar officials adopted the practice. In Chinese mythology, the moon was also associated with immortality. One legend says a woman named Chang'e stole the elixir of immortality from her husband, flew to the moon and became the goddess of the moon. Other than symbolizing harvest and immortality, ancient Chinese considered the round shape of the full moon a symbol of family togetherness and harmony. In the Tang Dynasty, Mid-Autumn became a popular festival among the populace for the purpose of entertainment. Families and friends would gather together to admire the beauty of the full moon. Some wealthy families would have banquets, inviting friends and relatives over feasting, dancing, singing all night. In the Song Dynasty, the Mid-Autumn Festival finally becomes the official legal festival, and imperial officials would have one day off to celebrate with their families. Today, if you ask a Chinese person what is the most important food on the Mid-Autumn Festival is, they will most likely say it's a moon cake. It is as important as turkey is to Thanksgiving. Moon cakes usually round are known as the traditional food eaten during the festival. But historical records show that eating moon cakes as we know them today was not part of the earliest traditions. In the Song Dynasty, there was a round-shaped cake called moon cake. It was steamed and had no filling, and it was an everyday food you could purchase from street vendors and not a festival specialty. Moon cakes gradually became a festival food in the Ming Dynasty. Historical records show that street vendors started selling mooncakes since the first day of the eighth month, and people usually gave each other mooncakes, watermelon, and lotus roots as festival gifts. On the fifth day, every family had mooncakes and fruits as offering to the moon, and the cakes later being eaten by members of the family. Today, mooncakes come in different size, texture, and flavors, most consist of a thin, tender pastry skin surrounding a sweet or savory filling. They also have some Chinese characters imprinted on top, usually words like Tuan Yuan, means harmony in Chinese, and Fu, which means blessing in Chinese, as well as the name of the bakery shop and the filling inside. Common mooncake fillings include nuts, candied fruits, lotus seed paste and bean paste, salted meat, and salted duck egg yolks. This is a brief summary of the history of the Meat Autumn Festival and the Moon Cake. If you are interested in learning more about the festival related mythology, you can go to the website of Hungry for History. There is more information on this topic. I will put the link in the description box below. 
Next, I'm going to show you how to make a 270 year old moon cake recipe. This recipe is found in a cookbook called Sui Yuan Shi Dan by Yuan Mei. He is a famous poet in the Qing Dynasty. This book has been widely accepted at the first great gathering of Chinese culinary knowledge. But judged by today's standards, this is a very odd cookbook because it does not tell you how much each ingredient should weigh and what steps you should take to make this dish a success. Yuan Mei's cookbook isn't very friendly to kitchen newbies. To be a good historian, we have to ask why. In feudal China, cooks learned their skills through apprenticeship rather than from books. They were usually illiterate and often looked down upon by the society. Cookbooks were usually written by literati who did not know the exact steps taken to cook a dish. They probably learned the recipe from their own cooks, servants, or had it in a restaurant, but hardly experimented on their own. The recipe I'm going to show you today is called Liu Fang Bo Moon Cake. The recipe is named after Yuan Mei's friend, uh, Liu Fang Bo, who was an imperial official. Yuan Mei had the moon cake at his friend's house and wrote it down later. The original recipe translated in English says using flying flour from Shandong to make flaky oil pastry crust as a moon cake skin. As for the filling, Grind pine nuts, walnuts, and sunflower seeds to fine powder, mix with some rock sugar and lard. When eaten, it does not taste very sweet, and is also fragrant, flaky, soft, and rich. Something truly extraordinary. Flying flour here means a very finely milled flour. It is very similar to our modern white wheat flour. To make this recipe, I consulted recipes of making Chinese flaky pastry and recipes of making nut-based um, moon cake fillings. By consulting a few more recent and complete recipes, I was able to fill in the unwritten gaps contained within the ancient recipes. And after a few trials, I eventually came up with my own version. Let's start with the moon cake filling. To make the filling, you need um, 100 gram walnuts, 60 gram pine nuts, and 50 gram sunflower seeds, and 2 tablespoons sugar, and some 1 tablespoon lard, and 50 gram sweet rice flour. If you are using pre toasted nuts, skip this step. If your nuts are raw, toast them in a preheated oven at 325 Fahrenheit for 5 to 10 minutes and roast the sunflower seeds and the pine nuts together and roast the walnuts in a separate batch. Toasting nuts can help them release their oil which makes them more fragrant and flavorful than in their raw state. Roast the walnuts for 10 to 15 minutes. The pine nuts and the sunflower seeds only need 5 minutes and stay in the kitchen while you are roasting the nuts since they can go from perfect to burned very quickly and trust your nose over the timer. Good toasted nuts should be fragrant and never burned or acrid. Transfer the nuts to a plate after you take them out of the oven. Let them cool to room temperature before use. Next, toast the glutinous rice flour in a pan for about 10 minutes until the flour turns a little bit brown. Set it aside and let it cool. In a food processor, add all the nuts Pulse a couple of times until they are coarsely ground. After the nuts and the rice flour cool down in a mixing bowl, mix together the nuts, the flour, sugar, and lastly, the lard. and mix them together thoroughly. Add the water little by little. Divide the mix into 10 portions and each portion is about 36 grams. Cover them up with plastic wrap and keep them in the fridge until you are ready to wrap them. 
Next, we are going to make the dough for the moon cake skin. To make the skin, we need two type of doughs. One is the water dough and another one is the oil dough. To make the water dough, we need 150 gram all-purpose flour, 60 gram lukewarm water and 40 gram lard. Mix all ingredients together and dig a hole. Add in the lard, mix them together. Add the water little by little. Make sure the water is not too hot or too cold, just lukewarm. Keep kneading the dough until it becomes smooth and soft. When you have a smooth and soft dough like this, and cover the dough with plastic wrap and let it rest for about 15 minutes. And next, we are going to make the lard dough. To make the lard dough, you need 100 grain flour and 50 grain lard. Mix them together, use a spatula, or you can just directly use your hands. Keep kneading the dough until you have a smooth and soft one. Now we have a smooth and soft lard dough. Cover it with a plastic wrap. Squeeze out all the air. We're gonna let it rest for 15 minutes before we use it. After the doughs rest for about 15 minutes, take them out. Next, we are going to divide them into smaller portions. Divide the water dough first, divide it into 10 equal portions. You can do this by using a scale. Each portion is about 24 gram. Roll them into small balls. Cover them with a piece of plastic wrap to keep them moist. Repeat the same steps. Divide the lard dough into 10 equal portions and each portion is about 50 gram. And then also roll them into small balls. Put them back to the plate and cover them with a piece of plastic wrap. Let all the dough balls rest for about 15 minutes before we move to the next step. Next, we are going to wrap the oil dough inside the water dough. Take one water dough, flatten it with the heel of your palm, and use a rolling pin to roll the dough into a three or four inch disc. Take one oil dough, wrap it inside the water dough. Make sure the opening is completely sealed. Flatten it down a bit by pressing the center with your thumb. Cover the combined dough balls with a piece of plastic wrap to keep them moist. Let it rest for about 15 minutes. After 15 minutes, take one combined dough and roll it from the center up and down and turn 90 degrees and roll up and down again until you have a long oval shape. Then roll up the dough like a Swiss roll. Put it back under the plastic cover and let it rest for about 15 minutes. Repeat the same steps to finish the rest of the dough. After 15 minutes, we need to roll out the doughs for the second time. Take one row, start from the center, row up and down, turn 90 degrees, then up and down again. Row it up, and then put it back and rest for another 15 minutes. After 15 minutes, all the doughs are ready for filling. Take one row and fold it from the center, pressing together both ends with the heel of your palm. Gently press the dough down. With the rolling pin, roll the dough into a 3 to 4 inch disc. The outer edges should be slightly thinner than the center. Hold it with one hand, place one filling in the center, press the edges together to seal up the filling until no filling is visible. From the center, gently flattening the cake down a bit to make sure the filling is spread out. Now you have your first moon cake. Place it back with the seal side down. 
when you are done with wrapping the filling, let the cakes um, rest for about 15 minutes before you bake it. Preheat your oven to 355 Fahrenheit. While the oven is heating up, we can start decorating our moon cakes. You can use 8 ball food coloring. I prefer red because it's the traditional color that is used for stamping the cakes. After you are done with decorating, put the moon cakes in the oven and bake them for 30 minutes. Let the moon cakes cool to room temperature before you eat them. This has been the most complicated dessert I have ever made and especially the part of preparing the doughs. But I'm really excited for trying them out. Wow, look at it. This is how flaky the dough is. I think I did a pretty good job this time. Look how many layers the skin has. It's so crumbly and now it's everywhere. Let me try it out. The nut mixture is a little bit soft but also chewy. I guess the chewiness is from the rice flour. I can see the skins. The skin feels like it has thousands of layers and it's a bit of um, crumbly and uh, crispy. It's a little bit sweet but not like too overwhelming. I can smell a mixture of the lard and the nuts. I think it will go very well with tea. Jonathan, do you want me to have a bite? Yes, I would love to. Have you had mooncakes before? I have, but not this particular kind. Oh really? What kind of moon cake you had before? Well, I've had them at the Moon Festival uh, back at Southern Illinois University. Mm -hmm. And I think they were pretty much store-bought oh, okay. for the most part. Mm -hmm. So here we go. Yeah, mild aroma, nutty, and I guess I can tell what the lard is. It's different scent than butter. Yeah. And then I also smell the flaky dough, which mm -hmm. is nice. So. It, it has a lot of the light crispiness mm -hmm. on the outside, but when you get towards the center, it becomes a little bit more dense and I guess the best word I can use is al dente. Mm -hmm. So overall, it's pretty good. I like it. Thank you for watching today's video. I hope you enjoyed the history of the Mid-Autumn Festival and the 270-year-old Mooncake recipe. Please like and share and subscribe if you love our video. I will see you next time.